I can't believe I am finally here with you guys. Hmm. I have no idea what I'm going to say. This has been a very, very, very long time coming and I have done everything I can to avoid it to try to act like I'm okay and keep everything going and oh it'll be okay you know I'll be fine I'll be fine and I've been trying that for years and it's not fine you guys can see you know my consistency isn't there and I just pretty much disappeared, you know? Um, whew. My heart is beating like so fast right now. I don't even know what I'm feeling right now. I told myself the whole time, I'm not going to cry, I'm not going to cry. And as soon as I sat down and it's like, boom, it's here, I'm face to face with you guys. Um, You know, it's like, this is it. This is it. Like, this is the time. And I'm so happy at the same time because I am so ready for this, you guys. I don't even know where to start. I have started this conversation in my head at least a hundred times. Um, trying to find words, figure out how I can talk to you guys, how I can tell you um it's just been so long since you know we it's like picking up from where I left off you know when I was in Denver before I moved here to Vegas and it seems like that was like the last you know connection the last time I had a connection with you guys and that really really hurts me every single day I think about you guys and I think if only there's a way to open up or tell them or let them know what's going on, you know, it's just like, but I just can't. I was not ready. But I want you guys to know that I have been on a long, long path to recovery. Whew. And after saying that, I can smile a little bit because I have come so far. It's time. I'm ready. I'm ready to close this chapter in my life, open the next chapter, start the next part of my life. You guys, you know, had no idea really. Some of you guys did have an idea which is weird. Some of you guys did. When I was in that situation, some of you guys noticed. A lot of you guys have reached out to me asking for advice, asking for help. And I always would give you guys advice. Some of you had no idea I was going through that at the time. The reason I'm making this video, yeah, three reasons. I've already said one of them. I'm ready to finally move on. I have healed myself. It's been a long, long time, a lot of healing, a lot of battles, struggles, anxiety, crying, anger, depression. I just came out to my mom. It was 6, 7, 18, and it didn't happen like that, but it was on June 7, 2018. I was so afraid. I kept it a secret. Um, I'm just being vulnerable with you guys right now. I'm just speaking whatever comes to my heart. Um, so this part is gonna be hard. Um, just kind of actually saying it out loud to you guys. So um, 
want to talk to you guys about the abusive relationship I've gone through and how it affected me long term, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. If there's anyone out there I can help with my story, that is my goal. Like I said, I came out to my mom for the first time. She had no idea. Um, I kept it a secret like a lot of women, a lot of men do, you know. Um, probably only, I can probably only count four people who ever knew anything about it. One of those people being my current boyfriend. A friend of mine at the time um, who came into my life for a reason, which was amazing. So she knew about it. The abuse started in the beginning of the relationship. So at that time, I was still friends with one of my old friends. So she knew about it because she was one of the only people I could call when I was in a really, really, really bad, bad situation. A really bad place. Um, she knew and that person's family kind of knew um, because, you know, it would take place in front of them. So other than that, nobody knew. And so um, I was afraid to talk about it, to ask for help, all those things, which I will be talking to you guys about that, giving you some advice. I don't even like can't even remember what I'm saying, like. It's just a lot right now. So thank you guys for bearing with me and just being there and listening. Um, and I remember once I came to my current boyfriend and I said, you know, I have to make this video. I have to. I have to let them know. He said, why? And I said, I owe it to them. I said, we had the closest relationship. You know, my career was booming. It was at an all-time high I mean I was just on top of the world and I had the most amazing relationship with you guys words can't even explain how I get to teach you guys and help you guys but how much you guys give in return and you guys know I it was like we were best friends girlfriends I took you guys through everything my boob job when I would move my family shopping I mean everything and then all of a sudden Thank God I finally got out of that relationship. I moved and everything happened kind of quick and it was more of God's plan, um, how everything fell into place. Let me say, I thought I was fine. I thought I was fine. Whew, let me tell you, I was far from fine. Um, I think in it all, you are just in survival mode, especially because I got into that relationship young and I just kept coping and coping and coping. I thought, I truly thought it wasn't until I got out and I was able to take a step back and see what condition I was in for me to say, oh my God, I'm not fine. Immediately following, I went into deep depression, but I didn't realize that at the moment. I lived in darkness. I did not want to see the light of day. I wasn't eating. I got super skinny. I was not, oh no, I would never, I was not going outside. I was not talking to my family. And that was in the transition where I was telling you guys I'm moving to Las Vegas. That's when I start kind of being gone at that point. I was using that as an excuse to hide and be away from the world and to process everything. Because once you go through an abusive relationship like that, um, the relationship was six years. The abuse was for was only started three months into it and I stayed and there were so many ups and downs and I mean I am well not am anymore thank God I have done a lot a lot of healing but I was scarred for life it was really bad I don't even know like what to go into detail with telling you how I came out I also have the domestic violence documents that I had to go do to get out and that was my first step. So 
I have not looked at these for years. Um, I knew that I wanted to throw these out as well because those were something I was holding on to, you know what I mean? Because I was trying to get a restraining order and that person fled the state and so I was not able to do that. So I kind of held on to the papers, you know, just in case anything, like so I would have proof. Or, you know, if this person came back around because I was very scared of stalking, you know, which had happened to me and all those things, you know, I wanted to keep those to be like, hey, you know, I have these if anything were to happen. So I'm going to get these. <sighs> wow, okay, so. Oh God, here is a police report. Oh God, I have not seen these in so long. Threatened to smash my face in and kill me. Name calling, of course. Threatening, harassing phone calls. Threat by following, threat by damage to property, throwing things, grabbing, shoving, pushing forcing sexual contact, um, punching, slapping, um, biting, choking, beating, forcing to stay in the closet room, homes or other locations. I also put down pulling hair. It's sad to read these, to remember or to know that I was in that position and it's so far from what I'm in now and that I know I would never, ever, ever let myself get to that point again is just, it's just like, wow. You know, I'll kind of tell you a little bit about my story. I don't even know what to say. I was 19 when I got with this person. Everything seemed fine. And then that person's colors started to show right away. Like I said, three months in, that was the first time I was hit in the face and it was so hard that I literally, either I was on the bed or I was standing up and I flew down to the carpet. And that was the first time I had ever been hit by a man before. And I just remember it happened so fast that I just remember that I was laying down. My face was on the carpet. And in that moment, my mom flashed. From that moment right there, I felt guilt. I felt guilty like it was me. It was my fault. There was something that I must have done to deserve this. And that right there, that moment in time was so toxic for me because that set the boundaries or lack thereof and tone and pace for the rest of the relationship going forward. And at the time, as many times as I look back and think about it, would there be any way with the age I was being 19 and in a new relationship and really liking this person and have never, you know, experienced this before um, and being a little naive or, you know, would I have walked away at that moment? And the answer would be no. And that is the that is the first, that is the first problem other than, you know, that person's actions. What I want to tell you girls and you guys out there in abusive relationships is when it happens that first time, oh, it's so hard because I know where I was at that time and, you know, no one ever really sat me down and talked to me about this. My mom would say, you know, if you're with the man and he ever hit you, you know not to be with him, right? And I'd be like, yeah. And that's kind of as far as it ever went. But I want to tell you guys and girls that if it ever comes to that, yes, people say just walk away, but it's deeper than just walking away. It is your boundaries. It is your love for yourself. In that entire relationship, I put that person first. 
not saying I was ever not taken care of by myself, but anytime anything happened, it was always, oh, he'll do better next time. Oh, it won't happen again. Oh, I let this one slide because of this. Or, oh, if my tone was just a little different, I bet he wouldn't have done that. Once it gets to a certain point where you're in love or in a relationship or have certain connections with someone after so long, that's when you're almost not able to get out. So do not even let it go that far. I know now and today in my relationship, in any relationship, if that were to happen, it's a no-go. It is a walking away because that is not even what I'm about or I cannot tolerate that in my life at all. And you know, a lot of you guys are probably like, oh, well, time, that's so easy for you to say. You're so beautiful and you're so successful and this and that. When I was getting my ass whooped, I wasn't too successful and pretty and all of that. When my life was getting threatened, I wasn't too pretty for that. When I was getting stalked, I wasn't too pretty for that or kicked out in the rain or stranded or not having any place to live with this person. I'm on the other side of the country moving away from my family for this person. I wasn't too pretty or too cute or whatever for that. It That has nothing to do with it. It has to do with your integrity, yourself, and saying, you know what, I'm good on that. If, and this is the thing I've learned too, I hope this helps anyone out there. People who have those characteristics are that type of person and are going to be like that and they are going to continue to display that behavior. My my boyfriend now never once laid a hand on me, a fingernail, a thumb, a shoulder, an elbow, a squeeze, a grab, I mean a slap a tap, I mean, it has, that is absolutely not him or people who have respect for themselves, for women or for their mothers or for their family or their sisters. These are people, men or women who usually don't have respect for themselves. They have anger issues. They have a lot of pain from their past that they have not dealt with and they're taking it out on you. They're angry all the time. They always have something to prove. They can never back down. Everything is always your fault. They can never take the blame. Or when they do, you know, now they're flipping the page and now they're crying all of a sudden and, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'll never do it again. Abusers usually, you know, show those characteristics. Or, you know, sadly, if they've been to the army and they have PTSD or they have trauma, they um, have a mental illness. That was another red flag that I passed up. Schizophrenia, paranoia, bipolar disorder, and they are not doing all they can to keep themselves safe, keep you safe, stay on their medication. If what I just explained is the person you're with and you know you have been abused by them before, you need to leave. You need to walk out, you need to leave, you need to do whatever you can, you need to reach out to someone and talk to someone. It does not matter how much you try to change yourself, how much you try to change them, how much you, I mean, I gave this person the world on a platter. It even got to the point where it was financial abuse as well. You know, I had to pay for everything. I had to take care of everything. If not, then I was called all the names in the book and I was selfish and I don't care about anyone. And if, you know, if there was any responsibility on that person, then that was always a problem, an issue. And then it just, you know, went on to the next step of abuse. If I knew that a little better versus, oh, well, he said he loves me. And we're in love, trust me, you guys. That's what kept me in that relationship for so long. 
I now can put parentheses, but at that time, you know, I thought I was in love. I thought that person loved me because that's what they said. Now, is that what they did? Is that what they showed? No. So I have just tried to reflect for you guys on my younger self and said, time, what would you tell your younger self in that situation? Now I know, I know human behavior a lot better as well. You know the saying, you can't change someone. It is true, but I just wanna go a little deeper into it. So for you girls out there, you know, when you're in love and you're young and you're in an abusive relationship, you know, you stay there because of the love. I want you to know that that is not love. And it's so crazy because I always heard this and I was like, I don't really get what they're saying. But the point is that if you are sacrificing everything for that person and you are still the bad person in the relationship, you are still cussed out, degraded, called bad names you're shoved when they're walking by you they're intimidating you they are threatening you they are stopping you physically from leaving your house you are afraid you are okay i will next get to what all this kind of you know um how I developed really bad anxiety and depression from this. If those things are happening, the cops are getting involved. You're going to jail, which I went to jail. You know, I mean, it was extreme. It was bad. Now, did I ever get a black eye? No. Did I get punched and slapped? Yes. Did I get kicked and spit on and my hair pulled and threatened and stalked and a hundred phone calls in a night harassed you know and accused when I'm with family or talking on the phone with family members that it's another man or it's someone else or you slut hoe bitch all this of uh, yes yes I did so if you are identifying with any of those things or you're living through that right now you need to leave you need to walk out, you need to leave, you need to do whatever you can, you need to reach out to someone and talk to someone. I know how hard it is. I know I tried and tried and tried. It was three years that I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for strength and help me God and help me and help me and show me the way and just give me strength, just give me strength. A few times it worked. And I left and we broke up. But that person would come back stalking and come back pleading and come back crying and go to therapy for one session and say, I'm changed. I won't do it again. And, you know, being women, we are natural nurturers. You know, you want to be there for them, especially if they have issues with their past, if they're broken, you know, you want to be there. You don't want to turn your back on anyone, on someone, especially that you love or that you feel loves you or they, you feel like, oh, I know, I know. My thing was I was always in love with what that person could be. That's who I was in love with. I, I was always waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for that person to change and not be who they are and be this and that. And because I always said to myself, well, I can do it, you know, I can behave, I can do this and that in a relationship, I can get along with that person, I can make this work, I can make this work, I can make this work. But did that person ever? No. And it got worse and worse and worse and more cheating and more abuse and more violence. And I mean, it got bad. Abusing pets, attempting to commit suicide. And after that, kind of coming back as the broken person so you can take care of them. And you know, everything's good for a few days or up to a week. But after that, you know, they always resort back to their old selves. It's so hard. I'm just so happy I'm finally opening up to you guys about this. Um, 
I feel like there's so many more things that I want to talk to you guys about. Like the moment I said enough, things I did to start getting stronger, that my breaking point, the moment I knew I was in fear for my life, complete danger for my life where I began fearing for my life and that caused symptoms of PTSD, anxiety. With that said, I will say that how I said in the beginning, I thought I was just fine. You know, I was in survival mode. I at the I was in denial as well. I, I knew there was a problem and it was always like, oh, I'm going to get around to leaving. Oh, I'll do it when um, it's comfortable for me or at the right time. I was always waiting for the right time. And let me tell you guys, there is no right time. And I still thank God for when I was able to say enough is enough and leave. Looking back, it was almost one of the hardest times. You know, all the other times, oh, get out, oh, leave, oh, I'm leaving, oh, I'm packing up, oh, I'm going to a shelter, oh, I'm going to a friend's house, oh, I'm going to my mom's house. You know, that happened so many times. It was easier to leave then than that end because it'll get worse and worse and worse and worse. So you guys, I just pray for you guys. I'm going to pray for you guys tonight. It is a blood moon. It is a full moon. So I have been just running off of this energy from the universe. I have been doing my candles and my smudge sticks. Um, I am going to smudge my makeup room. I'm going to smudge. We just smudged the bedroom, which was amazing. Um, I'm just happy. I'm light. I can't believe I did this. Yeah, you guys. So... This was the last and final step, sharing it with you guys, um, and I am so proud of myself. You guys just do not know what I've been going through. I've been trying to tell you guys this for at least a year, and I've been putting it off, like I said in the beginning, and saying, oh, I don't need to do it. Oh, I'll be fine. Oh, I don't have, you know, I could just start where I am and start fresh and start new, but I couldn't. I could not. So I'm so happy that I could share this with you guys. I am closing this chapter. Oh my gosh. I'm closing this chapter in my life. Um, so thinking about it, I, I don't even know if I would want to do more videos on this unless there's like a huge outpour on you guys just needing it. Maybe I'll, you know what I know I can do though for you guys? I can do updates for you guys, updates on my progress, updates on my journey because you guys are going through this as well from what I'm seeing on my Instagram post. So many of you women just left, are trying to leave are leaving, are broken, are hurt, are shame, have been shamed. I want to thank you guys so much for having the patience with me, for always still believing in me. And you guys know the potential I have, you know, in this industry. You know what I love to do. This is number one to me, beauty, makeup. You guys want to see me as number one. You guys know I have it in me. You guys know I have the talent, the artistry. I just want to thank you guys for always being there for me no matter what. Just know that I'm this far and... I am free. I am ready to fucking kill it, you guys. I'm ready to be back. My passion is back. My creativity is back. My artistry is back in these last months that I've been finishing up my healing and this chapter in my life. And I'm just excited to see where it goes. And most importantly is with you guys. You, 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 you. I want to get back to how we were, you guys, so I'm not going to keep rambling. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys for being there for me, and until next time, I will see you later.